the sandstorm was so bad that I can't stand. If I stand, the wind was lifting me up, trying to lift me up. And the wind was trying to lift the bike up too. So I had to lie the bike on the sand. And me myself also lie on the sand, tuck my head under the sand, waiting for the storm to pass. I you know the storm lasted an hour 40 minutes. Now, I couldn't get up. Remember that the sand of the Sahara was like 42 degrees. So I was lying face down, the whole of my body down on the heat. It was burning my body, like scorching heat, you know what it is like. But I couldn't stand because you know, standing up is a bigger evil, it's a bigger danger rather, sorry. So I to endure, it was painful. I think I remember tears was coming down my eyes, but it's not part of it. I can't expect not to ride 12,000 kilometers and not go through pain. That's not life. I know there will be pain, it will be painful. Well, it's part of the experience, it's part of the story, what makes the story richer? The most critical one was when I actually lost not just a flat tire, but actually uh, the rim was cracked, you know, the rim got broken and uh, there was nothing I could do. And that was uh, in Mali. I just left the Malian border, that's Dibuli. I was heading to Kai, which was 90 kilos away. And um, it was in the night, you know. Um, so the road wasn't too good. A truck that was avoiding a pothole on his own lane veered into my lane. And in me trying to avoid impacting the truck, you know, I swerved the way, then I ran into a ditch. Then I lost the railway. So it was in the in the night, you know, like about um, 8 39 pm. And the area there around there was a park where you have lions, you have a hyena, you have cheetah. So it was a really trying moment for me, you know, stranded. If you are moving, it's okay, it's dangerous. But when you're a sitting duck, you are not moving, you're just sitting there. It's even much more dangerous. So I just had to ask myself, you know, my survival instinct kicks in, which is okay, whatever it is, I need to put height between myself and whatever animal that wants to come. So the next thing is to run and climb a tree you know, try to just put height. And as I was climbing this tree, then I saw a ray of light far off, like uh, about uh, 400 meters away. So I ran there, then I ran to that village. Then when I got there at the village, you know, I saw it's a hamlet of three small houses. So I saw them there and, uh, and I read what happened. I had to use sign language because they speak French and they look at dialect and I don't speak French. And uh, you know, these people helped me, you know. They went with me, we recovered the bike, you know, they gave me water, they made me calm down, they made me, you know, like, they didn't leave me alone. So, on the way to recovering the bike, I got a network, and I had to call my interpreter, who was, that was 30 kilometers back. So, he brought a car and came to rescue me from, from the scene of the incident. But it was... A very traumatic experience for me. It was one of the experiences that really shook me to bone. You know, because I got stranded in a place where there are wild animals around there and I couldn't move. I was well received in all, okay, well, see, almost all the countries in Africa. Now, if you ask me, which of the African countries do I think I like the most? I would say, I would be tempted to say Mali, but I would say Côte d'Ivoire. And why I would say Côte d'Ivoire is being honest because Zena was there. So if you look at the wave, right, the tailwind, this move has actually garnered. I can say yes, I've achieved being able to spread. There's so much awareness about polio now, not even in Nigeria around the world. And you actually know, even yesterday, Bill Gates, one of the richest men in the world, actually commended me for that. And the CEO of Twitter, that was two weeks ago, commended me also for the same thing. So that tells it it's not just Nigeria, it's all over around the world. So we've been able to, you know, generate a lot of tailwinds about communicating about polio, eradication of polio in Africa. A lot of people are more aware. And you know, the, the good thing about this is when people get to be aware of things like this, you know, it raises the level of vaccine acceptance. And when people have acceptance for the vaccine, they take the vaccine. That's a very sure way to eradicate polio because if you look at COVID, some months back, most governments around the world, well, in Africa, were destroying their COVID vaccine because they got expired. 
and they got inspired because people were not taking it. There was vaccine hesitancy. So if we get all the vaccine for um, polio and people are not taking it, it's ineffective. So first, we need to make sure that we raise that level of acceptance. And that exactly is what London to Lagos has done. The level of acceptance has been heightened to a new had never experienced in the history of the polio drive and polio drive.